in this series of videos I'm restoring and repairing this Sharp MZ80A personal computer. In the video so far in this series I've stripped the unit down, uh, carried out a few minor repairs, cleaned all the parts, checked that everything's working as much as I can. Uh, it did boot up um, before I took it apart so it wasn't a great deal to do and now it's time to start the final reassembly. So the first thing I'm going to do is fit the cassette door I had to repair one of the mounting pins for this so I just want to make sure this lines up properly and open and closes as it should do before we start the rest of the assembly. So it's just the door itself, a spring, a bracket and a screw. So I'll get these fitted, we'll check the operation of that door and then we can move on to the main assembly. So that's the door refitted, I've refitted the spring, the bracket and the screw. It all lines up properly so the pin is in the right place. I'll just make sure that it open, opens and closes the way that it should do. Quite difficult to get to from uh, the inside without the actual mechanism fitted. But uh, what I'm trying to do is make sure that it's kind of got an over center action so as you open it, it pops open and stays open. And then when you close it, it should snap shut, which it does. So that's working fine. Just turn it over so you can see the inside and it's all mounted and um, the next thing we can do is reunite the top cover with the main chassis so that's just really a few screws that hold uh, this hinge bracket down to the back of the chassis so that's the top cover screwed back on just four screws and that lines up quite nicely so the chassis is not uh, bent or distorted. So the next thing to do is fit the blanking plate for the rear. So that just fits in to this space. Just two screws hold that into place. So I'll get that screwed in and uh, we'll move on to the internal parts. So that's that plate refitted, just two screws hold that into position and now I'm going to refit the grounding screw and the grounding strap. That just fits into this position and the cable fits on the inside, one nut and I'll get that tightened and we can start work on the inside. I've refitted the ground strap and so the next thing to go in is the power supply. So that just drops down into this position, the small board slots down into this location, one screw holds it down to the rear part of the frame and then there are a couple of screws that hold the uh, main assembly into the chassis. So I'll get that refitted. That's the power supply fitted and bolted into place. The next thing I want to fit is the speaker. That just sits in this position and there's a small bracket that clamps it down. So I'll get that screwed in. So I've got the speaker refitted. I also fitted the cover over the mains part of the power supply. And um, the next thing I want to do is fit the brackets that hold down the keyboard. So there's two of these, one sits in this position and then there's another one, um, but you need to fit the keyboard uh, while inserting this because this effectively is the pivot for the keyboard. And you need to put this in, insert it into the keyboard and hinge the keyboard forward, screw this down and then the keyboard will be held in place. You need to do this before you put the main board in. So this is the next thing, we'll get this screwed down and uh, we can move on from there. So that's the keyboard mounting brackets and keyboard refitted. So uh, we'll, we'll need to check that uh, properly lines up with the uh, main case later on. It's not much adjustment on this, so uh, generally speaking, if it doesn't line up, then it's the top cover that's not um, uh, positioned correctly. Okay, so the next thing to do is refit the main board. So that's very easy to fit. It just drops into this position, just a couple of fasteners and clamps uh, at the back. Ground strap, power connector, and keyboard connector, and uh, that's it. So I'll get that refitted. So that's the main board refitted. I've reattached the power connector, reattached the ground strap, made sure the two clips at the back and the two clips at the front engaged, and then refitted the two mounting screws. The next thing to refit 
is the cassette mechanism and that of course screws to the top cover so I'll get this screwed into place so that's the cassette drive bolted back into place we'll just check to make sure that the keys all line up and that the door actually operates the way it should after our repair so if I press the eject key it should of course pop open the door which it does and it should snap back shut so it looks like our repair on that was successful so the next thing to refit is of course the display unit so that just drops into this location and it's just then really a case of routing all the wires getting them sorted out so that they sit neatly reattaching the speaker wire reattaching the uh, cassette uh, connector which goes to one of these connectors I won't plug it in just now I want to get the uh, all the cables tidied up and neat and I'll get the uh, display unit in place first tidy up all the wiring and then that should be this unit ready for a test that's the unit fully reassembled I've routed all the cables they're nice and neat I'm not going to get caught when the top cover is open and closed I've refitted the uh, display unit and the front cover for it and all that's left are a couple of screws to hold the top cover down so we haven't missed any so I'll get this closed up we'll apply power and hope the magic smoke doesn't escape okay we'll apply some power and see what happens it's drawing about the right current at 130 milliamps We'll wait and see if the display comes back to life. And it's looking promising so far. So that's now looking a lot better. We'll try running a tape, see if it can actually read it. Let's rewind. And we'll see if it can identify that it's got a tape playing. So that's looking promising. It's saying loading basic tutorial, which is what's on this tape. And because it's read the title of the tape, means it can actually read the tape. We'll let it go through to the end, make sure there are no checks or errors. doesn't take too long to load this one I think it's about a minute and a half so I'll fast forward you through and stop if it throws up an error okay so it's loaded that successfully we've got the cursor back and we've got the prompt so that's loaded um, what I'll do in the next video in this series is run through a few programs I don't have basic on tape for this machine I've got it as a WAV file so I just need to create a tape and then we can run basic and uh, we'll try writing a few short programs and uh, have a look I've got some other tapes for this as well I'll see if they work but um, the machine is now looking quite nice it looks not quite new but uh, fairly close to new it's uh, obviously um, looking a lot better than it uh, it was the breakages have now been fixed and uh, we don't seem to have broken it which is always a bonus so in the next video we'll try and running some software on this